G'day guys, it's Lee Dipros here from fstoplounge.com. I'm here today with a wonderful group of people, the panel you can see below me. Uh, we're here to discuss the Fujifilm camera that's just been sort of announced uh, by picture form. We don't know a model number yet. Uh, there's lots and lots of rumours out there, but we'll get to that a bit later. But first of all, let me just introduce you to our panel. So I'm going to start on my far left. We've got Andre from Germany. Andre, did you just want to introduce yourself and tell some people what you shoot with and why why you like photography? Hi. Right. Uh, my name is Andrew Apple. I'm a photographer from Central Germany, where I run a photo studio. I mainly shoot portraits, and I just switched to the Sony Alpha Seven. Uh, what I love about photography is like capturing the speciality of the people I photograph. I take pictures of. Um, it's like yeah, capturing their their unique. Uh, uh, I can't explain better. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, you you like capturing the motion in the photos. You do a lot of studio stuff. Would that be right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That sums it up. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to throw it over to Andrew Newman uh, on the other side of the world. If you just want to uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself, what you shoot, and where you're from. How's it going? Andrew Newland uh, from Tennessee in the States. I uh, shoot sports a lot, but my passion is in landscape. I'm actually um, supposed to be shooting this hockey game right now that I'm watching. Um, so I'm kind of on the job, but I love Fuji gear, so I'm excited to be here and see what this is all about. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, it's good that you've joined us in the middle of a shoot. That's a true photographer. <laughs> <laughs> and another true photographer who's on uh, going back to the UK, we've got Matthew Maddock. And Matthew, did you just want to tell us what you shoot with and where you're from? Hi there, yeah, I'm Matthew. I'm from the north of the UK. I'm a commercial photographer. Um, and I abandoned the SLRs a couple of years ago and moved to Fuji's. So I started with the X100 and now the X Pro One, and I shoot my with the X E2 now. And yep. I run a website, photomad.com blogging about the experiences of that. Fantastic. And it's a really good blog. Um, make sure you go and check it out after as well. Um, Thank you. Now, in the middle, we've got Paul. And Paul is in Western Australia. And Paul, do you just want to tell us a little about, a bit about yourself and uh, also what you shoot with? Um, hi, I'm Paul. I'm known as Paul MP across most of the internet. Um, I am a travel, landscape and commercial photographer based in Western Australia. I shoot with pretty much whatever I can get my hands on. At the moment I have a bunch of Canon gear and <laughs> Fuji are very nice to send me the odd camera to play with, um, although I am seriously considering the Sony A7R as well. Fantastic. So, well, thanks for I being do. here, Paul. Really appreciate it. And right. two Pauls left. We have Peter. Um, actually, it might be reversed on the screen, but yeah, Peter, um, you're from Western Australia also. Do you want to just tell us a little bit, bit about yourself and how you got into photography? Uh, yeah, um, I started photography, well, my interest in photography when I was about, I don't know, 12, because um, I got into storm chasing and stuff like that, and it got serious when I turned 16, so I bought my first SR then, which was a Canon 350D. Um, yep. I shoot with the 600D, um, many landscapes, seascapes, and severe weather, and that's it. Okay, fantastic. And sorry, you said that you shoot now with a 6D, is that right? Uh, 600D. Oh, 600D, okay, fantastic. Well, thanks for, thanks for joining. Now, to right next to me, actually, I've got Hugo. Uh, we go on the other side of the world again. Uh, Hugo, just want to just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, uh, this is uh, Ugo Che from Italy. I'm on, uh, maybe I'm the only really amateur photographer here in that photography is not my business, so I'm trying to make it a bit of a business. And so that, that's a good thing, in the case, whatever suits my fancy, which at the moment means mostly landscapes, but I've taken to, to shoot people more. And uh, I'm not really interested in a new Fuji camera because I already have two, so... Yep, <laughs> and that would be the X-T2 and the X-T2 X and the X-1 of the yep. Yes, okay. So you could probably tell this is a little bit dominated with a bit of Sony, we've got some Canon users and we've got some Fuji. So we've got a bit of a range of people. Uh, I myself, I shoot Fuji. 
Um, I'm one of the co-founders of F-Stop Lounge, and I thoroughly enjoy what I do. Um, I also work for an imaging company as well. But, uh, you can research that yourself. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to bring everyone together tonight because it's pretty much the first time that Fuji's done, I think, a, a sort of a um, a teaser banner, basically, for the first time in, in quite a long time. Um, so it's really good to see Fujifilm putting it out there. And um, guys, I'm going to be. This is going to be an edited video, so you'll see it up in the top right. But can I just get your first sort of thoughts on what this new Fujifilm looks like? I'm going to throw it over to Paul. Me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the only Paul. Uh, yeah. It looks pretty cool. I mean, it's it's a little bit bulkier than their regular bodies by the looks. Um, yep. Has a lot more dials to play with, which I love. It looks um, it reminds me of a rangefinder, but with a mirror. <laughs> like it, it just having the dials on top. So um, yeah, yeah. I mean, over on the right, is that a is that an ISO or is that a shutter speed control? So this is uh, on the right hand side. We've got the ISO control, um, and it's got the little push down knob in the middle to actually turn it. By the looks of it. So you're not going to actually knock it. Um, and then sort of to the uh, right of the hot shoe, if you're looking through the viewfinder, sits the shutter speed. And yeah. uh, it looks like it's still got the uh, three buttons in between the next dial, which is the, a custom function button by the look of it, based on what the XE2 would be. A Wi-Fi button. You've got the shutter button as well. Um, you've also got awesome. this... Yeah, I would imagine that would be for video. Um, and this this one here is your exposure control as well. So I think uh, it's yeah, all around. They've just... Yeah, exposure compensation. Yeah. Um, the, the function button doubles as a Wi-Fi button on the XC2, so that's probably just one button with a Wi-Fi label. It's right. Okay, so it would actually have a dual function. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, who uses a Sony A7 here? That yeah. would be Andre. Yeah. <laughs> Andre, um, who wants tell one? me one thing that you like about your A7 and one thing that you think this Fuji should have that your Sony does have. Oh, at the moment I find it hard to say what the Fuji should have because actually I love the dedicated wheels and buttons. Uh, like having an exposure compensation uh, dial directly, an ISO dial, etc. And all this yeah. stuff the Fuji has, and I really like it, how it's layered out. And um, I find it hard to say what I would miss at the moment. It really looks like a great camera. Okay. And Matthew, you currently shoot pretty much every Fuji under the sun, um, mainly being the XE2, and you've had a go of the Sony A7 as well. Um, what, what are your thoughts? Because you've obviously used the XC2 side by side against the A7 in your videos. Yeah, yeah, I have, and uh, I actually much prefer the XC2. <laughs> I do okay. have an A7 here, and okay. I just find it a little bit annoying to use. Okay, can um, I ask why? Just the dials are all there on the right. XC2. You can see where okay. everything is. The yep. M7 is just a little bit more fiddly to use. One okay. thing I would like to see, answering you possibly a question, is I like the side loading card on the A7. Yes. And I would like to see that in the in the Fuji. Yeah. And also the battery on the A7, is that actually a side loading battery or is it underneath? It's an underneath battery. Okay. Because I know that there was some users, uh, I think one of Jay Patel's comments. Uh, that were coming out on a Fujifilm video, I think, was uh, one of his things was to actually move the battery to the side because as soon as you put a base plate on the uh, underneath, it blocks the battery chamber. So, you know, that's one thing. But uh, that's really interesting to hear that, um, Matthew. Now, I'm going to throw it over to Andrew. Andrew came across to Australia recently and shot pretty much on an XE2, I think, from memory. Um, yeah, and the X100S, they're my favorite. Yeah, and tell me, what did you like about that over your current Nikon? Um, the size for travel is the biggest thing, because um, my Nikon 
the gear bag was gigantic and heavy huh. and having the XE2 or the X100S on my side just was great and the image quality was amazing um, one thing is the dials I think I might have had a pre-production model because I kept like switching the exposure compensation in my pocket or on my side so I would pick it up to shoot and it would be like a negative three or something um, yeah. But, you know, the dials don't bother me, but they uh, I wish they would have put that little thumb turn button on the exposure compensation. It didn't look like they did that. And um, yeah. one yeah. thing I think they could put that the A7 has is maybe a full-frame sensor, maybe? <laughs> right, okay, something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, I think uh, a lot of Fujifilm fans have been asking for that, but Mr. Kawahara in his recent video, uh, head on show at, um, at Fujifilm, uh, I think he was saying that there's no need to go full frame. That yeah. The quality's there. So, yeah. yeah that, if you do a that search true. on that, you'll see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, someone's dying there in the background there, Andrew. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm in the quietest spot I can find, and it is still pretty loud. i got to get out of here pretty quick. No and worries. Start shooting, but I'm, I'm, I like this no, camera, well, thank, so I want to hear more about it. You, what what do you it? like about the X100S and the XE2? that you would like to see on this camera? Uh, the X100S is really different. Um, many people ask me that question, why, why two cameras? The, the X100S, the, the great thing it has, it's, it's so stealthy and silent. You can literally, for street photography is great, you can literally shoot people without them noticing. You can go right in their face and they will may not even notice you have a camera if they notice it's uh, looks like an old fashioned it's even a conversation starter ah oh, that's nice camera is it film or something yeah can uh, i can i just quickly interrupt there andre uh, sorry andre you go um is that the camera that you're using for your um i think you're doing a stranger a day yeah uh, 365 thing can you just tell us a little bit about that just really really quickly i'm doing this this personal project where i'm trying to every day to approach a stranger on the street and take their portrait, ask him permission, and maybe start a conversation and so on. I, I did that because I wanted to overcome a bit my natural shyness and get right. better at shooting people, interacting with people on the street and so on. And for that I'm using a mix of my cameras and using either my X100S or I would most often use the, the XE2. Uh, the reason for that is just that I just got the XE2 very recently and just got a couple of lenses and I wanted to try out those lenses, the 35 right. and the 60, how they work with portraits. I'm thinking yep. of alternating between between those. Okay, so you're mainly using those two. Well, that's fantastic. Um, I'm just going to add a thought on, on top of that. You said that you sort of like using the X100S because it's quite small. I think um, a lot of people are going to see this camera and go, well, what's the difference between this and an XE2? Why would I go this? And from my first sort of view on this camera when I first saw it, um, you know, it looks much bigger. Um, just with that big bump in the middle, I, I imagine that's the viewfinder. Um, I think it's... Like you know, yeah, it, it does look like it's got a mirror. Um, yeah, yeah it's, definitely, it's going definitely to have an electronic yeah. viewfinder, you know, maybe larger. I think that I wanted to just to say to add, if you look at that photo, uh, the lens that's on that photo looks like exactly like this one. This is the 35-1.4. Now, if you, right. I, I was trying to compare sizes. The size of this camera, this is the XE2 compared to the lens with that yeah. one. That one actually even looks smaller than this one. If it were really? not for the hump, the width doesn't really look any larger. It yeah. looks even smaller. Although, when you look at the shutter button, it does look like it comes out a little bit, like there is some type of grip. Well, there's and a bit of a grip that, there. Yeah, you can see that sort of emphasized yeah. on the shadow, and there's, there's also... Definitely, like more, a, definitely more of a grip on this side, and the hump here, but in terms of width, it's probably just the same size or even smaller. Yeah. And if you notice at the front, I think on the picture of the one that you can see mm. there, it looks like there's a thumb wheel at the front as well. Yeah, there is. There is. Yeah, so that to me says that it's got a grip. Um, and for me, I've got quite big hands. I love that it's got a dial to change the ISO. Um, I can actually just, it's tangible, I can just go 
that's the that's the ISO control. I can change it right there. So that's that's very exciting. Now, can I ask really quickly for um, those studio light users? Who uses studio lights here? Because it looks like it's got a studio plug at the the um, the right PC section of it. That little dial. Below thing. the ISO dial. Yeah, below the ISO, ISO dial at the front. I'm looking Normally, at the a, uh, on Canon, it had had that on my 1D series. It, it looks more like a dial than anything to plug anything in. Yeah, because um, I know my Canon had that same sort of um, almost embossed uh, groove on it on on the side on the right hand side, and it always used to come off. Um, so that's why I think it's that. One thing that I thought maybe that's as well. And one thing that I notice is that it doesn't look like it has an, uh, a pop-up flash. So I'm going yeah, to test that it's got a PC connector for studio lights. Yeah. Sorry, Matthew, what did you say about um, the I studio thought, flash? I said I thought it might be a, a cover for a, studio, for a PC sync as well. But yeah. to be honest, I mean, I use studio flash. And I've, although I thought it was kind of cool to have it on the X-Pro1, I've never, ever used it because I think <laughs> everybody uses radio triggers now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think this is going to probably have um, the same flash units as all the other X-Series by the look of that hot shoe. Um, now, I, I, I'm not sure what room is going out there. But... To lighten up the uh, oh, okay. that he, uh, did, and a comparison to the X-C2. So, right, okay. So, well, yeah, going on from that, like it's small. That's and small. Then depth of preview, uh, depth of field preview by the looks. Right, okay. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Now, can I ask what rumors you guys have seen out there? Yeah, I heard it's, it's fully weather sealed, which would be nice. That would be nice. Really uh, 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 coming back to what I would love to see with a camera is uh, battery grip, especially for the studio shooting portraits. I want a battery grip to shoot right. uh, vertical. Yeah. And um, Paul, have you seen any other rumors? Uh, I've seen the weather ceiling, 16 megapixel um, sensor, same as the XE2. Um, right. Dual. Uh, memory card slots is another one I've seen, but I think that's more just somebody having a wish list. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the weather ceiling will be a bit pointless until they bring out weather sealed zooms. Right. Um, because the, the way they're shaped at the moment, they actually physically move and just draw dust in. Um, okay. That was one of my bits of feedback on the last bit of gear I used from uh, Fuji was, yeah, okay. all very well having mirrorless and you know, that has its own inherent dust problems, but when you introduce yep. a non-weather sealed lens, you're just drawing in dust in, well, particularly in Western Australia and other yep. dry, arid places where we just live with dust. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm just going to throw it quickly over to Matthew, Peter, or Hugo. Have you heard anything additionally to what Andre and Paul have said? Not in addition to what's been said, no. No. And uh, Matthew, what would you really like? One feature on this camera, if it could have anything, what would you want it to have? It's something really simple, but I would like an intervalometer to do time lapse. Yeah. Yes, I would like that too. I would have to agree with you there, because Nikon um, currently do. You can do intervalometer in using uh, Nikon or Nikon, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. And just to sum up, guys, before we head off, um, can I ask your opinion on this camera? And what was that for? Sorry. Uh, it's the Harnell Giga T Pro Two. That's a okay. Tonya Hot Two, and that's um, the remote. That's an intervalometer and wireless remote. But uh, yeah, it'd be nice if this one had a uh, plug. <laughs> to yeah, okay. to plug yeah. to plug a remote yeah. into because yeah. uh, I think. The X Pro One I used, you had to use one of the old school, you know, screw in punch 
um, yep. remotes, which is can not really ones. a remote, it's a cord. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the XE2 didn't even have a anywhere to plug anything in, so... Yeah. Um, well, the XE2, you can use R, uh, I think it's the R80 or the R90. Well, the with the XE2, you can connect it. You can connect basically any intervalometer to the audio jack here. I use one yeah. that I use with my Nikon. Yeah. And Matthew, yeah. what what do you have there? I see you rushed off and got something. Oh no! Well, as a password, oh, but I have the uh, IO shutter, but it's okay. just something else to carry around, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It'll be easier. Yeah. One thing okay. that this camera should definitely have, if I might ask for one thing, is this thing here. This is the X1 less view mode button. Yes. I don't know why they took it off the XC2. It's so annoying not having it. Please bring it yeah, back. I agree. I agree with that. Oh, I wish. Yeah, there's a lot of people actually agree with that. I know um, uh, some X series photographers uh, have messaged me and said that as well. So it's interesting to hear that. Now, lastly, um, let's just sum it off with what you'd give this camera out of 10 based on sight. Uh, obviously, you don't know the specs and everything. Um, I'm going to sort of jump in the middle, but let's just start it off with, uh, let's start off with you, Go. Me, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, to vote on something that we just seen the top oh, really? of. Really? Come on, enjoy it. <laughs> Eight. All right. Eight. Let's start Eight. off with Andre, because he, he'll give it a vote. Uh, I give yeah. him a... Okay, well, go ahead. Um, I think I really like the dedicated diodes for everything to set up, not having to press buttons to fiddle with, and it seems, mm. from what I heard, it has a bigger electronic viewfinder, which would be awesome. Uh, of course, I wish it were a full frame, but with the current X lens uh, setup, I don't think it will be full frame. So I'd go for 8 to 9 out of 10. Right, okay. And I'm going to throw it over to Paul. Uh, I mean, assuming some of the rumors are close, you know, with the 16 megapixel sensor from the XE2, and uh, that was the other one, the eight frames per second um, shooting is what what they're reckoning reckon with AF tracking. I'd I'd give it a pretty solid eight, maybe eight and a okay. half. Yeah. Um, to be revised on further official details. <laughs> okay. And Peter. Yeah, well, Based on the I like the look of the body. I like the look of the body. Um, the, it looks easy to use. The controls. It's larger than a normal Fuji film. So, based on looks alone, I'd give it an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Good work. Okay, and I'm going to throw it over to Matthew. Uh, I don't think I can mark it just yet because I haven't seen and held it. But put it this way. Yeah. Uh, I've told my local camera store as soon as it appears on the system to order me one, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough, man. I, can, right. see, I can see that with the XC2 being a pretty good combination. Yes. I think um, based on... Well, typically I know in Canon sort of range, these sort of cameras uh, have more grunt, and I think... Well, I'm hoping uh, that these come out with a bit more grunt uh, on this camera, so it'll be interesting what specs do come out. Um, now, I'm going to throw it back to you, and then I'm going to quickly close it off. Yeah, um, I would say that if it, if it has the same internals as the XC2, and nothing really new and surprising, I'm giving it a 6, because okay. I get to the point of the... I'm expecting, though, that it will have something right. internally new, like a larger viewfinder, better autofocus, or anything that will make it really yeah. set it apart from the current mm. line of cameras. Otherwise, it's just going to be an XC2 or an X-Pro1 in a different package, and I would not be yeah. interested. So no, I'm expecting it to be Sorry, go really good and be an 8 because it has something really new and interesting. And yep. if it's got that view mode button, it will be a 9 for me. OK. <laughs> Can that Can be just, like three just go over something that you go was saying. Yes. I'm just a little worried that Fuji are introducing too many cameras and maybe going to start confusing people. You know, do I right. buy an X-Pro1? Do I buy an X-C2? Do I buy this new one? And they do have to make it something different to, uh, you know, mm. stop confusing the market. Yeah, and you know what? I'd have to agree with that. Um, I know that I personally get a lot of personal messages on Facebook. I mean, I created a, a article on 
the difference between all the Fujifilm models. And uh, that got a lot of feedback because mm -hmm. people were just sort of up in the air not knowing what camera it was. But I put always put it back to this, you know, Canon and Nikon, they've sort of always had a range and released models to add to their range over a long period of time. Whereas I think Fujifilm are just trying to enter this market and, you know, establish themselves so quickly. Um, they need to build up all these bodies. So over time, I think it will drop off. And, I mean, we've sort of seen that in the lens uh, roadmap that they released. Um, I'm not going to babble too much more, but with that lens roadmap, uh, back in 2013, we did see quite a number of lenses come out. And if you compare that to this year, with 2014, 2015, there's not a lot of lenses compared to the last year. So you'll probably see something like that with bodies. That's just the way I see it, um, based on that lens roadmap. So interesting thoughts, guys. I really appreciate it. And lastly, I'm just going to give it a, my vote. Um, I am probably going to give it a solid 8 out of 10. Um, until I see the back of it, I really I really need to uh, just give it the 8. The view mode button is a big one for me. I'd like to see that on this camera. And I really hope it's got weather sealing as well because that would just be a perfect landscape photography kit with that 1024 that's coming. So I hope uh, everyone got something out of that. F-Stop Lounge, uh, Google Hangout, and uh, we'll definitely catch up next time when we when we see a new camera being released. And I just want to thank everyone uh, who joined and contributed to this. Make sure you go and check out their websites. So I'll just quickly run through them. We've got uh, Andre Appel, um, what is it, fstoplounge.com, and what's your other site, Andre? aapplephotography.com, but you can find all those data in the About Us page on F-Stop Lounge. Correct. Andrew Newland's also on F-Stop Lounge. Um, his website is new, new Photography. <coughs> he had to go away for a shoot. Um, we've got Matthew. Your website is photomatic.com. Yep, and that's all Fujifilm related, so you can hear about all those experiences and uh, comparison against the Sony A7 as well. Some great tutorials there and video reviews, I should say. Um, Paul. Your website. Uh, if you go to paulmp.com, that'll get to my website. Excellent. And you'll see beautiful landscapes of Western Australia and also the world. And Paul yes. is available for hire. And Peter Coe, what, do, what is your website or Facebook page? Um, I don't have a um, website, but yeah, my Facebook page is just Peter Coe Photography. Um, just search it up on Facebook and you should find it. Excellent. And you'll see some wonderful landscapes. That's how I first found um, Peter online. Um, I know I used to live in Albany, and I, all these wonderful images kept popping up. Like, Who's this guy? And it was Peter. So um, it's great to finally meet you, Peter, in person on a Google Hangout. And you go, your website. Yeah, you do. My website is at uh, ucphoto.me, uh, but you can mostly find me on Google+. And I'm also a contributor to F Stop Lounge. Excellent. And you can find me on F-Stop Lounge as well. So thanks very much, guys, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.